Hello everyone, I'm Dragon Whelp and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. When we last left off, we were doing a bunch of uh, science-y things. We came back from the moon, uh, we're doing different things and this and that. We got Bob back home, got a bunch of science, but <clears throat> unfortunately, we can't spend it. We have to upgrade our R&D building. Yes, I know there's two nodes left, but... These nodes are not quite useful yet. They will become more useful next episode, but not this episode. I guess I could go ahead and pick them up. But, as you can see, I've gotten everything. And the only way to get the next tier of science stuff is to upgrade the R&D building. As you can see, I have 508,000. It's going to cost 451000 to upgrade, but it increases our science limit by 500 Also, um, Kerbals who EVA can collect surface samples, and resource transfer becomes available, which is, oh yeah, so we can switch fuel between different tanks and whatnot. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade this place. And now that we've upgraded it, we are we have access to things up to 500, which is this tier here and this tier here. So this allows us to get a lot of more a lot more sciency things that can help us like bigger and better engines. Uh wow, we have to I have to wait to get that one cuz I can't afford all of the the points or all of the pieces in there because and most people don't realize you have to have the science to unlock the node but you also have to have the cash available to purchase each of the things inside that node sounds convoluted i know but eh, it works out for the best that way it makes the game especially when you're in career mode it makes the game um, more difficult in terms of getting things fast because if it was just cost science you could just sit there and farm science all day long so it makes it where you actually have to go out do missions to get money so let's just look take ourselves through these nodes this one is fuel bigger fuel tanks bigger RCA to uh, um, RCS tanks we really haven't been using RCS lately uh, this one is for like a mini mini ships and stuff. We'll probably put those on future satellites, but um, This one gives us air brakes and better ailerons This one gives us landing bigger landing struts and medium landing gear for our planes Which is that's that's kind of cool and gives us the big drone parachute or yet yeah, is it drogue? Yes, Drogue. I thought I was saying it incorrectly, but I guess that's right. Uh, this one has the different modules that we could do in a bigger service bay. I might actually get that one. That's actually because uh, this capsule right here holds three Kerbals, which keeps me from having to accommodate for, you know, have bringing extra capsules and stuff along to, to t bring along our scientist or whatnot. Bring along Jebediah and then, ooh, the mobile processing lab. This is where the science farm becomes prominent. You sit there and give this thing enough electricity and a bunch of science gathering materials. You can gather science all day long. And some ladders. Ooh, a relay antenna. Let's see. Let's read this. A relay antenna will automatically store and forward cap. Uh, capabilities as well as advanced pathfinding algorithms we need to get this for our satellite before we send it up because the mission that we uh, I went to mission control and got and took the mission for the satellite so we're able to do that but I'm gonna wait till next episode to get it done uh, because this episode we're going to go through each each of the science things and I'm going to go to a different building in in the uh, in the Kerbal Space Center, would never been in before, and most people don't even know this building exists. But yes, we're probably going to wind up picking this up for the relay because we're going to need 
when we start going off, like, not off planet, but out of the Kerbin uh, sphere of influence and going further out, we're going to need relay antennas to help us get science. And even, even still, we need science or a ways to get science back to Kerbin. Say, if we go to Minmus, we need relay antennas and stuff for our, on our satellites. And this is just solar panels and batteries. So the better things that I'm thinking that we could probably take is the command modules, which gives us the bigger command modules, which I'm going to buy. And then the science, the mobile science lab, which I'm thinking about taking or get us better solar panels. Uh, it's, it's a toss up. It's a toss up. I may need to get... The relay antenna. Let's see, what does it do? It looks like it's just it. Yeah, it just stores stores data, and I'm pretty sure any of the antennas can do this. I think that was just this is just a specialty specialty looking one. But the building that that I was talking about earlier is called the administration building. Most people do not even come into this building because they don't even know it exists. And if you're playing in sandbox or science mode, you're not allowed to come in this building either because there's no point. All you have to do is you, you, your um, money is unlimited and all your technologies are governed just by science. But when you're playing career, there is different things that you can do as far as gaining more money. You can trade science for money. You can trade uh, reputation for money. And you can actually trade money for science if you wish. But this is what each of these people do. Mortimer Kerman, finances. Linus Kerman, science. Walt Kerman, public relations. And Gus Kerman, operations. We click on these things and it tells us what each of these do. It's like the fundraising campaign. This allows us to take 5% uh, reputation gains, which yield 1,015.08 uh, funds for each one unit of reputation. So every reputation point that we get from, if we committed to it, any reputation point we get from this point forward would give us 1,015 roughly money per point spent this way but it takes five percent of the reputation so five percent of let's say if it takes a hundred if we gained a, a hundred reputation and it took five five percent that's five points so it would give us roughly five thousand credits five thousand money or five thousand funds and then this one the patent licensing takes five percent of science gained and yields 2,101 science for, for each point of science used this way. This is really, really powerful, especially when you get into the unlimited uh, science farming system where you take and put like the science lab and put it on another planet and just let the scientists do their work. You can gain a lot of science this way, which gains a lot of money in return. Um, Takes 5% science, uh, science gain from field work, which is like we do EVAs and stuff like that. It takes 5% of that, which yields 84 credits per one point of science used this way. So that's, that's like the patent licensing. This is very powerful if you know how to use it properly. And most people think, well, why would you want to get rid of the science when you're actually trying to progress? Trust me, there's more science out there then there is nodes that you can buy and money is just especially in a career money is a short supply so if that's more to burn in the things he provides Linus he takes five percent uh, reputation gains and turns it into science just like Mortimer takes five percent of reputation and turns it into funds he also does the same thing but with science rather than turning it into money he turns it into science outsource R&D um, we can't afford this yet but it takes 5% of our income and trades 
you know, yields one science for each 1,280 something, or excuse me, 1,280, uh, 1,000 or 12,812. Oh goodness, I need to learn how to read. But we don't have the money right now because we only have 57,000. We're really, we're kind of poor right now because we had to upgrade our R&D building. But that's about to change. It's it's about to change because we can take more missions from the mission terminal or mission center, mission control, and get money really really fast. All right, onwards. Linus also provides us with research rights sellout. We get 1,600 points or 1,600 funds for 40.16 science, and it is affected immediately. This is when you run into a problem, like for instance, where I'm at. I have more science than I do money, so I could, you know, trade my science for money, which is essentially what what that is. But I think we have enough. We're okay. If if worse comes to worse, we can come in here and and do business with these people to to take care of it. But anyway, on to Walt. Walt takes funds and turns it into reputation, just like Linus takes. Uh, reputation and turn it, turns it into science and Mortimer who takes reputation and turns it into money it's the same concept except he turns it into uh, he takes funds into reputation so that way you can become more popular I've never really found out as far as career mode goes I've never really found out what reputation actually does but uh, if anybody knows, please leave a comment down below. I'd really be really be interested in finding out. Um, then on Walt, he also has the open source tech program, which takes five science gains and turns it into reputation. It also takes five science from field work and turns it into reputation. Uh, the bailout grant, which will take our reputation and turn it into straight funds. Uh, 150, no, 15,000 funds for 189 reputation. I don't even know what a reputation's at. All you can see is this bar up here, and there's no way to click on it to find out exactly how much you have. But then you have, ultimately, Gus Kerman of Operations. He takes funds of, um, minus 1.5% funds off launch cost and R&D purchases. That's awesome because it makes things in the R&D building a lot cheaper, not to mention um, it cost us money to actually launch ships or planes or anything for that matter. So having this here with just the first one, first effect to begin with, minus 1.5%. And we can commit a bunch of points to this. We can commit a lot. I mean, due to the fact that our... Um, administration building is not very you know upgraded yet we can only do I think 25% but still even at 25% 7.5% funds off launch cost that's that's pretty huge especially if you're launching continuously not to mention that and the R&D purchases which I was to showing you earlier not only do you have to spend the science but you also purchase the little pieces inside that node so it actually makes that a lot cheaper. But not only does the aggressive no negotiations from Gus do this, it also minus 0.25% funds off of facility repair and construction. Our facility, whether you know it or not, can be destroyed. And if any of the buildings gets destroyed, we have to repair them before we're able to use them again. Luckily for us, nothing like that has happened yet because i am not been silly and roaming, you know, aiming a rocket directly at the VAB or anything to blow it up to smithereens. No, I don't do that. Um, and then we also get a minus 2.3 reputation on each discount. So it, it allows us to, this one is, is really powerful if you can get it all the way up to 100%. But right now with the way things stand, we only can only have one strategy max. And I think at max level of the administration building, we can only have three of these. 
So we have to pick and choose wisely. And I don't think after you've picked them, I don't think you can try, you know, swap them out for anything. But I could be wrong. Onwards to more what Gus offers. Recovery Trend Spotter Fittings. This is plus 5 to 5.5% uh, to minimum vessel recovery and then minus 6.2% from minimum vessel recovery or maximum vessel recovery. So this allows us to gain more money for the pieces of the parts we, we actually keep intact when we recover our, uh, our vessel at the end of a mission. So we have a lot of pieces that we can, you know, get refunded. This, this will help us in that. And then leadership initiative. This one just gains seven, like a whole bunch of stuff, plus 7.5 funds to milestone gains, plus 7.5 to reputation milestone gains. It just adds a lot of stuff to the milestone gains, but it also takes away from funds from contracts gained, uh, science from contracts gained, and reputation from contracts gained. It's, it's, it can be powerful, but I tend not to go with this one because this one in the long run can be prop better replaced probably with aggressive negotiations. But that's, that's the administration building. Like I said before, not many people go in there. Most people don't, most people don't even know it exists, but I figured I would share my knowledge of what I've learned through looking things back and forth and doing a little research. Like I said, there's a there's still some gray areas about the administration building, but what these things do is plain and clear. If you want money, you go with Mortimer. If you want science for reputation, you know stuff like you know what you want your reputation gains to go to science, or you you know you want to put your income towards science, then you go you go to Linus. You want to go to Walt. You want to trade some of your reputation or science gains into money that's where you go or wait what does he do oh he trades science for reputation and then if you just want some you know just totally good all round not you know don't trade this for that just have something that's just flat rate then Gus is your man but that's all I have to say on that we're going to go back into the R&D building really fast because I, I've while talking about things in the administration building, I know exactly what I need to do. I need to get better power and I need to get better solar panels because I was thinking that when we send up the satellite in the next episode, I'm going to need them, that satellite to have solar panels and these give us the better, better solar panels. So there we go. And not only did we do that, since we upgraded the uh, research and development building, I can now go to each of these new zones, or not new per se, but I can go back to each of these zones where I've taken my rover before and actually collect surface samples from each of these, which is another science-inducive thing, <clears throat> which will gain us more science in the long run. So I'm going to do that off camera. But uh, I, I will show you bits and pieces of it, how, how to, you know, perform said action. But I'll wait to do that all in the next episode. So thank you, everybody, for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And until next time, see you later.